Hey guys, check this out. No, the camera lens is not on backwards. We're in a right-hand drive JK. This JK is a little bit rough, but I'll tell you, the air conditioning works great. So one of the goals of this build was to explore traction control options. As you can see here, we have control of the traction control system now using the factory switch. A lot of guys don't understand how ESP works. ESP stands for Electronic Stability Program. Inside of ESP are many different components. You have your active braking components and you have your torque management. Torque management is pretty simple on the JK. It's discrete. What that basically means is traction control. So when you lose traction or skid, you basically lose power. It's discrete. It just shuts off the throttle so you have a dead pedal. This can be a good thing and this can be a bad thing. Many of you who have got stuck in an intersection where you have a dead pedal and you can't get out of the intersection because traction control has engaged knows the frustration of what ESP can do. So basically the torque management part of ESP is traction control. It reduces engine power. This engine reduction is requested by the ABS module to the PCM. The flip side of ESP is active braking. We have anti-lock brakes, all of you know what that is. We have BAS, brake assisted steering, brake locking differentials, BLD, ERM, electronic roll mitigation, trailer sway control, all sorts of things to use the brakes to help you go where you want to go. So if you're going down a road and you start skidding sideways, the brakes will apply to allow the vehicle to go to the commanded direction. And what that means is inside of your steering wheel, you have something called an SAS, steering angle sensor. The SAS, along with the four wheel speed sensors, knows where you want to go because it can look at the commanded steering wheel input, then compare it to the relative wheel speeds. If you're going around a turn, obviously the outside wheels are going to be turning faster than the inside wheels. So the operating system can do the calculation and determine where you want to go. So if the operating system does determine that you are skidding, it will apply the brakes to get you going in the direction you want to go. Anti-lock brakes is pretty simple. If you panic stop, it's going to pulse those brakes. A lot of guys don't know that anti-lock brakes is not a new technology. It's been around in automobiles at least since the 1960s and well before that in aircraft. Aircraft landing have very high wheel speeds and if pilots applied the brakes they would just flatten the tires. So it's not a new technology but it is a very effective technology. As you move up the ladder with traction control and you get into the exotics and the performance cars, they have something called adjustable traction control and what that allows you to do is to dial in the amount of assistance you want and we're only going to talk about torque management at this point. Basically discrete traction control means that if skidding is sensed it cuts the power. Similar to a reduced power event, you just go to an idle. But you don't want to do that when you're racing. So you can adjust how much or how invasive the computer is. I remember we used to race at the track. The dirt track guys loved traction control. So in higher performance cars you have adjustable traction control. You can dial in as much invasiveness as you would like. Like I said, most guys can go faster with traction control help than without it because the operating system can sense wheel speed at a microsecond level. Using the wheel speed sensor signals, the operating system can detect skid very quickly. So if you just floor the throttle, the operating system is going to back off the torque until the wheels stop skidding. That way you can basically leave it floored and have maximum traction. Something you really could not do without traction control. Let's get back to the JK. So basically if you floor it and you start skidding, the power is going to be pulled back. A lot of guys don't like that, including me. So the federal government gave us what's called partial off mode. Partial off means that you can turn off the traction component in ESP. There's a couple of different reasons you want to turn off ESP. If you have a modified vehicle, as Chrysler found out in 2007 and 8, you put 40s on it, you don't calibrate the speedometer, ESP can actually prematurely engage. So you're going off a fairly on-ramp, your vehicle speed is not reading correctly, you've magnified the error between the different wheel speeds, ESP engages and pulls you into another lane or off the road. It can be very dangerous. So Chrysler quickly included what's called the steering wheel dance and a software update for the earlier JK so you could disable ESP completely. Now when I say disable ESP completely, I mean everything. That includes torque management and all active braking. A lot of guys like to run in that mode. Not having torque management means your engine runs better, you probably will get better economy, and there will be no invasiveness. With ESP disengaged, you don't have the fear of premature ESP engagement. Your engine's 
probably going to run a little bit better. Coming from the old school where I came from, you learned how to drive. Today's world, I think a lot of these automatic systems are creating people that aren't very good drivers. But it is definitely something you want to have. So with ESP disengaged, there can be advantages, especially on a modified vehicle. I have been in ice storms and having ESP and four-wheel drive high definitely helped me get down the road faster. But the bottom line is the FEDs did allow what's called a partial off mode, and that allows you to turn traction control off. That's what that little button does on the center of the dash. It disables the traction control portion of ESP. Now a little bit about this Jeep. It is a early, I think it's a 2008, I could be wrong, maybe a 2009, right-hand drive federal Jeep. And yes, they did make federal Jeeps that were right-hand drive. I think most of them are mail carrier or had rural uses. This Jeep has a 5.3 LMG, which you guys know I really like. It's an iron Gen 4 engine, very durable, low cost, over 300 horsepower. And I'll tell you, it's running awesome in this Jeep. I'm just cruising along here on the highway effortless. This is a light Jeep with small tires. It is a two-door, so this 5.3 is perfect. You have four-cylinder mode engaged on this 5.3, and I am running in the four-cylinder mode quite a bit. So my guess is going to be the economy is going to be pretty good. As you know, the Queen's country propagated throughout the world early on and brought right-hand drive with them. So British colonies like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa have right-hand drive. And these countries are very much into Jeeps and JKs and JLs. So we're going to do our best to support a right-hand drive kit. The installation of this engine couldn't have been easier. In the past with our weld-in motor mounts, we had to make custom motor mounts to move the engine over about one and a half to two centimeters to clear the steering gear and other components. With our easy mounts having adjustability, we didn't have to modify them. We literally bolted the engine in, slid it over about an inch and a half, and everything lined right up. We did have to go with a different water neck outlet, which is straight rather than angled, but no modifications there. The wiring guys brought the interior connections over to the driver's side, at least the driver's side in this vehicle. And to be fair, there's not a whole lot in the interior in our swap anymore, not like the old days. We fabbed up some ECM and power distribution center mounts, and that was pretty much it. The rest of the swap went just like a standard JK. Hopefully here in the near future, we're going to support a right-hand drive kit, a proper right-hand drive kit with engine mounts, water outlet, wiring, and a proper bracketry like the accelerator pedal mount and computer mounts. A lot of the smoke you're seeing in this video is from the California fires, so let's hope them the best. So here I am cruising along as a four-cylinder right-hand drive two-door JK. It's a really odd sensation, but some strange way it feels natural. So we're going to hit the mountain with this JK and we'll see you soon.